Hi everyone, for today's video, I'm going to give my thoughts on the new Ahsoka series. So for those who don't know, Ahsoka is basically a mini-series created and written by Dave Filoni, and if you couldn't tell, it's part of the Star Wars franchise. And it takes place after the events of Return of the Jedi, and takes place around the same time as The Mandalorian. And it also serves as a continuation of the animated series, Star Wars Rebels. And keep this in mind for later. So the series focuses on our main protag Ahsoka Tano as she investigates an emerging threat to the galaxy following the fall of the Empire. And it basically starts with two dark Jedi, one called Balin Skull, played by the late great Ray Stevenson, and Shin Hattie, played by Ivana Sokno. And these two end up rescuing Morgan Elsbeth, who was captured by Ahsoka Tano in The Mandalorian Season 2. And apparently, both them and Ahsoka are after a star map. For what reason? To find a location of the main antagonist, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and to an extension, Ezra Bridger. And for those who don't know, Ezra Bridger is an ex-con artist turned Jedi, who was part of the Ghost Crew from Star Wars Rebels, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Ron is a Chiss alien who is big brained in the art of war. And these two were last seen in the Rebels finale as they were taken away to an unknown part of space by the Pergo, which are space whales who can travel at light speed and they use their hentai powers on Thrawn. Anyways, Ahsoka meets with General Hera Syndulla and Sabine Wren. And Syndulla advises Ahsoka to obtain Sabine Wren's help to unlock the map. And she does, because basically the map is like a Rubik's Cube, but in sphere form. Unfortunately, she gets confronted by Shen, who steals the map, and stabs Ren. And keep in mind, this is just the first episode. In the second episode, turns out she's just fine, as she's recovering and informs Ahsoka of her findings. And they find out that the HK droids who were with Shen were previously at one of Esbeth's factories on Corellia. And so both Ahsoka and Sandula travel to the Corellian shipyards, only to find out that there's a massive hover drive being built for Elsbeth to travel to Thrawn's hiding place. And unfortunately, they lose him, and Ahsoka again contacts Ren to see if she is ready to become a Padawan again and to find Ezra Bridger. Meanwhile, the villains are preparing their hyperdrive so they can find Grand Admiral Thrawn. So here are my opinions. So far, I'm liking it. As you can see, the production value is pretty top-notch, and also it makes a lot of callbacks to the original trilogy and prequel trilogy and the Rebel series. In addition, one of the standouts for me in this series was the character Balin as he is both a force to be reckoned with and one of the most interesting characters. And to me, this whole series is like the most Star Wars out of all the previous live action shows. As it has a mix of campiness with some serious themes thrown in there. Now, is there anything I don't like? Well, there's a couple things. For instance, like I mentioned before, the show is a continuation of the Rebels TV show. And if you're not a diehard Star Wars fan, you'll be confused as fuck on what's going on. Also, I didn't get a good sense of chemistry between Ahsoka, Hera, and Sabine, which is a shame because the Rebel series has done a good job on that, but I'm not feeling it here. Also, some of the acting is a bit off. For example, Ahsoka seems one-dimensional compared to the Clone Wars and Rebels version, but I do admit that Rodazio Dawson is doing doing her best at this. As for Hera Syndulla and Sabine Wren, yeah, for me, they're not clicking, as they don't seem like their old selves from Rebels. Also, I have to say that, for me, this episode was very slow-paced. Like, I get it that Dave Filoni's trying to catch, like, general audiences up to speed on what happened after the events of Rebels. But if you're someone who already knows what happens, this is just slow exposition. Also, the pacing seems off as it stretches the runtime in these episodes. Although it's not as bad as, let's say, The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, or even The Mandalorian. Also, I have to admit something that you've probably seen memes of, and it's the scene where Sabine gets stabbed. And my god, Qui-Gon Jinn is doing 360s in his grave as people in these series are shrugging off lightsaber stabs. And okay, I'll give Sabine the benefit of the doubt, as she was stabbed on the side, which is something a lot of action movies do. But still, that's something that's also driving me crazy. So, overall, this series is so far starting at a decent start. 
Like I mentioned before, if for general audiences, they may or may not be into it. But if you're a diehard Star Wars fan, you might enjoy it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just decent. And I can't wait to see more. And I hope it improves from here on out. So fingers crossed. And I'll catch you later. Goodbye.